Did you know that the most legendary microphone maker also made recording consoles? Neumann started making consoles for broadcasting. Through the 1960s and 70s, Neumann released a wave of modular recording consoles like the 30381, the N20. Some of these consoles like the 30381 go for over half a million dollars. In 1974, they came out with the OV56 mic preamp. The OV56 is built around the OA10 op amp which is one of the earliest discrete op-amps made by Neumann. This is the Gare OA-10 full kit. It comes with all the parts you need to build the OA-10 style op-amp. In the background here, you can see me checking all the resistors in the kit. Um, the kit comes with everything, transistors, resistors, capacitors. It is not necessarily beginner level solder work. The solder that you gotta use with it is super small, but the directions from Cappy are some of the best out there. It even specifies the diameter of the solder. This board has been created by Gary Barnett of Barnett Industries. This discrete op amp is a 12 transistor amplifier modeled after the legendary Norman OA-10. The original OA-10 had its own proprietary footprint, so Gary redesigned this to fit a 2520 to make it a little more universal. The original OA-10 also was designed to run on 22 volt rails, and the GAR OA-10 has been rigorously tested on 28 volt rails, so it can be used on 24 volt or anything under. Really, it's rated 12 to 28. The API 2520 op amps had nine transistors and were rated for 20 volts. The ones before those, the 1731s, actually had eight transistors, and if you compare it to the Neve, the BA440, it also had eight transistors, but it was on a 24-volt rail. Nowadays, a lot of op amps come in the format of chips, um, but these potted op amps were, were one of the early steps toward microchips in a way. I plan on making another video on just op amps comparing Neve, API, maybe Neumann, SSL, who knows, just everybody's op amp style. Um, if that's something you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. These particular ones are going in my PM700, aka the Japanese. It's gonna be a modified monster of sorts. The OA10's design is very transparent, but the Neumann's design gives it an overall open sound, not enhanced in the mid, high, or lows. The total build time honestly was around six hours. The first one took a long time and then the second one I was able to do in about an hour. You wanna make sure to take your time though because the components are fragile, especially the transistors. Um, it suggests putting them all in at once and then kinda of doing one leg on each at a time so you don't overheat it. There's a good look at it complete. Coming soon, I'm gonna test it out, do a little AB comparison between it and a chip. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I got a whole lot more on the way.